Hello, folks. This is a torture test of 2018.21.9, and which I just got last night. And I'm going to put it through the uh, tests that I've done in the past. I'm on autopilot right now, uh, 65 mile an hour max, three car following distance. And I'm going to head down to this um, old steering wheel. One thing I found is that it they have shortened up the time between prompts to hold the steering wheel to about 40 seconds, which is what you get for having people misusing their Teslas, not paying attention. So anyhow... Um, and one of the problems that I've seen in the past is coming up to my right, like right here, where the vehicle will move over to the right on a hold steering wheel. So I'm going to call out the hold steering wheel prompts just so you can hear the time between them. Uh, pulling over into on-ramp lanes. And if there's a dashed line, sometimes when we did our big cross-country drive a couple of months ago, um, some places they put dashed lines along the entrance ramps as it, as it connects to the freeway. And then it's all, no problem. car doesn't do anything. But um, I see, yeah, it's moved over. Just hold steering wheel. It, it moves over just a little bit. And there's a um, the particularly bad case in the opposite direction on this freeway, and I'll get to I'll get to that. There's a guy right behind me here. So I'm still 65 autopilot, coming up on this. Uh, I'll say decreasing radius S turn that in the past the uh, firmware hasn't been able to negotiate. Now, in this case, I've got some lead cars, so it's slowing down. It's a good thing. The annoying the guy's falling back behind me, so that's good. Um, So it has slowed down here. And in the past, it, the, the second the second turn, vehicle doesn't manage to hold steering wheel. The vehicle doesn't make it. I have to take over because it doesn't steer hard enough to go through this turn right here. Let's, let's see what it does on this build. And it's doing it. It's doing it. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to turn around and go back the other direction. So stand by. Okay. Back on again. And let's see. Okay, autopilot on. Excuse me. This is actually the second take. The somehow uh, after the first set of videos, I went home and tried to download them, and two videos mysteriously disappeared. So this is actually a second take. So actually, it's the second time the vehicle went through that S turn successfully. So that's actually a good data point. And it's one thing to do it once, but if it does it. Uh, see there, it's moving over, and it's moving back. Hold steering wheel. So the weather's actually improved. Well, we it's improved in the sense that we we're in a hole right now. You know, there's there's nasty weather to the west and the north. 
uh, pretty spectacular looking clouds. But uh, right now we're in this lovely hole of sunshine. Uh, this will be interesting. I'm not going to do anything here. Let's see what this, see what happens. Hopefully this person. Oh, no. See, it tried to dive over. It tried to dive over, and I was had a vehicle in the lane, in the on ramp lane, and I took over control. So that's not a good thing. It didn't sense that there was a car there adjacent. It should have with the acoustic sensors and not tried to dive over. So this is the on-ramp that in the past it's really misbehaved in the step over behavior and there's nobody adjacent to me. So, and there it goes. There it goes. Wow, it went all the way over. It went all the way over into the hold steering wheel, into the uh, into the lane, and then worked its way back out again. I guess guiding on the on the right white line. And there, it's kind of moved over a little too. But I don't know what it is about the geometry of that situation, but it really misbehaves right there for some some reason. Okay. Um, next there'll be the uh, the typical torture test that I have done in the past. Okay. Once again, this is uh, 2018.21.9 Torture test, and this is let's see, now I'm back in autopilot, and let's see how this works here. This is gonna have to guide its way back onto the freeway. I did it, I did it okay. So, the next segment is I'll say the classical torture test that I've put. Uh, the other builds through, and I said I'm in, I'm in autopilot right now. Wind is really picking up out here, and the sky is getting pretty black. So we will see if we end up with a deluge of rain. You can see the trees over there really getting blown to the side. We don't typically get wind blowing like that around here. So, yeah, made it around, okay. It's actually the case that the prior builds could do this. So this is not a new thing. Uh, ever since about 10.4, the, uh, the builds could uh, make that transition from one freeway to another. Oh, and there's a little bit of, well, now the rain is starting a little bit. So, okay, so I'm at 65. I'm not a pilot. There we go. We're diving back over into the into the entry lane, the on-ramp lane. <coughs> I don't know if you can see whether well, the camera you can see the, the sky, but we've got a really dark sky right over us. So let's see if we're going to get some lightning bolts crashing down here. Okay, so we're going through here okay. Gosh, they just repaved this. This is so nice now. Nothing nicer than driving a Tesla on brand new asphalt. It just glides. It's so nice. Now we slow down. Okay. I'm going to slow down a bit there, but we made it past that on ramp. Now it's not speeding. Now it's speeding up. So that took a little bit. Maybe it took a little more than it should have. Okay. Old steering wheel. I'll just call it out next time again. It does the old steering wheel. And we're kind of diving a little bit into this on-ramp. 
Um, boy, it's really windy. So again, I'm on 65. And they closed the close the viaduct today for inspections. We won't have to do that. Hopefully after this fall and the tunnel is open. Then they'll just tear the viaduct down. Now I may get a chance here to show you something. Another feature, and I'll do that's in air quotes. Um, auto wipers. We'll go through this next little section here. I don't want to turn on the wipers because I don't want to get things too crazy. Um, Because this next... I kind of wish this car wasn't in front of me. Um, Okay, made it through that. Great. That's good. Okay, now... Let's uh, see if it's going to dive over here. I uh, didn't. Okay. Now, let me show you something that makes me crazy. Uh, a whole steering wheel. Uh, I've got the auto wipers off. Okay. I'm going to turn them on and watch what happens. Okay. They kind of go nuts for the first maybe 30 seconds or so. And then they slow down to a, the, the rate they're supposed to, to wipe at. And I really wish that Tesla would do a little fine tuning and make it stop doing that. Because it it's, it's crazy that the wipers just go nuts for about 10, 15 seconds. And then they go to their old steering wheel go back to their their expected pattern. Now this is this is an, an opportunity to talk about the radar. I'll mention that the, the radar in front of these things operates at uh, 75 gigahertz which is great for uh, you know, resolution, because the wavelength is so short. It's about four millimeters. However, 75 gigahertz really isn't very compatible with rain. Uh, Rain will drastically shorten the range of a 75 gigahertz radar, hold steering wheel. So, um, you know, I think I've heard, I've seen some other people like a digital nomad, talking about how the, uh, where they had some problems with the radar and the rain. Right now, I don't see any problems, but um, it's it's one of the drawbacks of these automotive radars is a lot of cool features. Uh, And the other problem with a 75 gigahertz radar is that it's hard to make power. If you're running a radar classical radar down around 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, which is what the air traffic control radars work at, you can do kilowatts, you can do tens of kilowatts, you can do a tremendous amount of transmit power. These little radars maybe run 10 watts at most, so they can't really fight the rain very well. I'm going to turn around here, so stand by. Okay, back on again. As I was saying, the one can look that up, uh, the transmission properties of different radar wavelengths online, lots of places. I think there's a site called RF Cafe has a lot of um, RF-related data. But, um, yeah, it's... It's just a drawback of the uh, of the wavelength that these run at, and these and the wavelength is assigned by the FCC. In fact, it's assigned in it by international agreement. There are these really there's this really cool chart you can find online. Uh, it's a PDF that shows the wavelength, hold steering wheel, 
the wavelength allocations from very, very low frequencies out to very, very high frequencies, well above this radar, well above 75 gigahertz. And um, one thing that always strikes me is that the, it's full. There's no gaps. There are no gaps whatsoever. Everything is allocated. And it always, and then it becomes a push, uh, you know, a, a pushing match to, uh, you know, define space, whole steering wheel, um, in that space, in that frequency space, to, to do new things. And these radars are assigned, uh, I think, like 70 to 80 gigahertz or so, kind of a relatively narrow band for, uh, for operation. So it's not like they can just operate anywhere they want to. They have to operate where they're assigned. So that makes it, that, that's a drawback, obviously. It would be better if you had rain conditions like this if the radar could switch to a lower frequency and uh, they would lose resolution, hold steering wheel. Let's see how it does going around this turn. Now, this is a good test of that problem I thought I had where it was sliding to the right on left turns. And that guy's kind of close to me. I wonder if we actually moved over a little bit passing him. That's what I was hoping to see. I was hoping to see that the system would would realize somebody was a little too close on the side because that person wasn't staying in the lane, in his lane or her lane, and, um, and slide the car over a little bit accordingly <clears throat> to maintain it, <coughs> excuse me, a decent gap to the side. Okay, so it went through that that down and, and left turn really well. And I think what I'll do is I'm just going to leave this on and let and go through the the transitions between freeways up ahead here. So I'm going to make a lane change here. Still in autopilot, 65 miles an hour. And I'm going to do this. So I'm on 599, and I'm going to transition to, oh, okay, so he's ducking in front of us. Handle that fine. So now I'm just going to let, oh, I've got it set for three for the following distance. I'm going to go through the transition to 405. So it's 599, I-5, and then 405. And the the hold steering wheel, the the cheat, if you will, is that it's all the same lane, so I don't have to change lanes to do this transition. And the prior builds, ten point four, fourteen point two, did this just fine. So it's. I know they announced the new feature about making exits. Um, it should this this build should also do this just fine. Hold steering wheel. Yeah, it's it's it, the hold steering wheel request is is a lot more frequent now. That's what you get for idiots driving Teslas and getting into accidents and not paying attention. Unfortunately. Right. So in the sense this is kind of a cheat because it's got cars, lead cars here. It'll help it slow down. But the traffic's a little too high right now to to make this. So that was a 35-mile-hour exit. It slowed down about 35 there. It was a little excessive. But the whole steering wheel. Okay. So it went through that pretty 
pretty smoothly, just like the, the prior builds did. Okay, I will... I have a couple more things. One more thing to, to record, and I'll do that on another street, so stand by. I'm going to record this going through this traffic like this. I want to see... Uh, we didn't move over. Well, we passed that car there that was on the edge of its lane. But it's really staying very centered. Okay, now I've got a car, car coming from the left to merge. There we go. We let it merge. Okay, that's good. But then see, yeah, we're you know, see we're stepping over. There's a case where it steps over into a left on ramp a little bit. Hold steering wheel. By the way, I do love the auto wipers. Uh, aside from the turn on bit where it kind of goes nuts for about 15 seconds, uh, I do love the auto wipers. Really good job. I think they were they worked pretty well. They were really well. Okay, here's a guy that stepped over into our lane. Oh, okay. That's interesting. We it braked. It braked. I'm glad I got that on video. The guy was actually driving on the the line of his lane, on the left side of his lane, like he was coming into my lane. And the vehicle actually braked a little bit there. So that was interesting. That was a nice feature. It didn't move over. Note that it didn't move over. It, it hit the brakes. Interesting. And the big storm apparently has moved off to the either the north or the or the east for the moment, but there's a lot of stuff still off to the west. So we're we're probably going to get schlocked. Hold steering wheel. We're going to get uh, schlocked again. I always love blue sky, nearly clear sky, rain. Now, it's interesting why the, the auto wipers don't come on right now. They're on, but they're not coming on. And they actually should have come on. So I was sitting here singing the praises of auto wipers, and then it rains and they don't turn on. Yeah, old steering wheel. Jet airplane. Okay, so I'm glad I caught that. And uh, I think that's about it for now. Thanks. So I'm about to do something that will be a little shocking, but I want to show. I want to test something that uh, a digital nomad spotted some time ago. I need a road that's relatively clear. And there's another car coming here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over into the left lane. And note that I've got all the lines in the world and I've got autopilot that could be activated right now. We get to the top of this hill. Yeah, there's nobody here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull over into the left lane. I'm in the left lane. And I've activated autopilot. 
Okay, and there's a car coming, so I'm going to get out of this lane. Um, that should not happen. That should not happen. I understand these vehicles are sold around the world, and if you're in, I'll just try it again. I don't have anybody, anybody coming here, and autopilot activates. So I'm in autopilot on the wrong side of the road. Okay, uh, there should be some localization such that if you're in the U.S., you should not be able to activate autopilot on, um, on the wrong side of the road. I mean, you, it, it, obviously, England and Japan drive on the other side of the road, but holy cow, you should not be able to do that in the U.S. There should be alarms going off. It should be absolutely rejecting that, that maneuver that I just did.